بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله this is the second sitting in our series in the study of the sharh or explanation of a sunnah li imam al mazani rahmatul ali rahmatan wasi'a and in the last lecture we talked about a little bit about imam al mazani and the introduction and that this is a concise treatise which is clarifying the i'tiqad or the aqida or the creed of ahlus sunnati wal jama'ah and what you'll find from many of the rasail or many of the uh the text the early text of the salaf al salih ridwanullahi alayhim is often they would write treatises like this clarifying the aqid of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa because of the need for clarifying the creed and methodology of the salaf and that in fact due to the rise in many un-islamic beliefs and foreign beliefs that came into islam that ahlus sunna would be forced to clarify to the people what are those asul or those principles and fundamentals of the creed of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa and imam al mazni uh, was from those uh, imma from those imams who uh, wrote these types of treaties the treaties which clarify the i'tiqad or creed of ahlus sunna and so the treaties uh it began with uh what was common in many of the treaties of the salaf and from the later day or the latter day imma is that they would begin with a supplication so that this would call to attention the issue in the matter at hand being studied and it would cause mercy to enter into the hearts of those listening or those reading and studying these treaties and so it is from the sunna and the sunna uh and the way of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa to supplicate for the ones uh reading or listening or attending uh in attendance at a uh gathering of ilm and so the imam he began by saying may allah protect us in you through taqwa and grant us the success to remain in conformity to the guidance to proceed so you may allah make you righteous have asked me to clarify to you from the sunna and a fair that you may make yourself patient and adherence to it and avert thereby the doubtful sayings and the deviation in the newly invented affairs of the misguided ones so again here we see imam al-muzni rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasi'a very clearly making dua and uh, supplicating and drawing attention to the purpose and his intent uh behind this uh this this treaties which is to clarify the creed of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa in defense defending the i'tiqad of ahlus sunnah defending the minhaj the methodology of ahlus sunnah and refuting that of ahlus bid'ah and all those newly invented matters uh that were being introduced into the religion and the uh the rise of so many sectarian differences and all of this was in accordance 
with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and in accordance with uh, prophecy, prophetic prophecy, because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "If tarakatil yahud ala itta wa sabain firqa, if tarakatil nasara ala thnatain wa sabain firqa, wa sataftariku hadhi umma ala thalatha wa sabain firqa, kullaha fi nnar illa wahida kulla man hiya ya Rasulullah." Qala min kana ala mithu ma kana alayhi wa ashabi. Uh, the Prophet والسلام, said the Jews will break into 71 sects, the Christians 72 sects, and my ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And then the Sahaba, تعالى, they asked him, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions. So that hadith lets us know that there would be division in the ummah, sectarianism would arise, and that the way to safeguard, uh, safeguard oneself and safeguard one's community would only come about by following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, following the minhaj and the methodology of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala in the Salafa Salih. And in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the Prophet ﷺ said, The best people are those of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. And so this is also further evidence showing us the importance of following the Salaf al-Saleh and avoiding bid'ah and avoiding that which would be from the worst of his ummah and that would be those people who deviated from the ittiqad, from the creed of Ahl Sunnah, and from the menhaj or the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And so Imam al Mazni here, Rahmatullah is very clearly clarifying why he wrote this treatise and that it is a response to being questioned about you know, what is the creed, what, are, what is the correct belief of Ahl Sunnah, what is the correct madhab of Ahl Sunnah, because of all of those false ideologies and false uh, creeds and deviations from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had become prevalent in his time and prior to his time. He said, Indeed, I shall explain to you a clearly distinct and enlightening menhaj as sincere advice that cannot be attributed to me or you. In light of this, I shall begin by praising Allah, the possessor of correct guidance, the praises for Allah, the most deserving of remembrance, and the first of those who must be thanked. So Imam Al-Muzni here is clarifying that the minhaj of the Prophet wasallam and the minhaj of the Salaf al-Saleh are one. And that it is clarity and guidance to be followed, and that it is safety, and it is the sabila mu'minin. It is the path of the believers, and this is why he said, "And uh, enlightening menhaj as sincere advice that cannot be attributed to me or you." So, what we know and understand from this statement is that his clarification of the itiqad and creed of Ahl Sunnah can in fact not be attributed to him, meaning that the creed of Ahl Sunnah is not attributed to him. It's not something he made up and it's not something just a group of individuals came up with, but in fact, this is a minhaj rubbaniya. This is the methodology of, uh, of, of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. It is a divine methodology because the methodology of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions Radiallahu Ta'ala and those who followed them in righteousness. And so this uh, is a divine path and although people may make mistakes along the way we have to know and understand what 
causes a person to leave this divine minhaj and what causes a person to uh, what beliefs and what methodology are a part of this divine minhaj. And so here uh, Imam al-Mazni rahmatullahi rahmatin wasi' is uh, also articulating that this minhaj is divine and that it's from Allah Azza wa Jal and that it is the sabil al-mu'minin it's the path of the believers. And then he said the praises for Allah the most deserving of remembrance and the first of those who must be thanked and I praise him al-wahid the one as-samad the eternal who does not have a female companion nor offspring he is far exalted above having an equal so no one resembles him and no one is similar to him he is as-sami' the all-hearing al-basir the all-seeing al-alim the all-knowing al-khabir the well acquainted al-mani' the invincible al-rafi' uh, the exalted so here imam mazani is mentioning some of the divine uh names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as he mentions there he also mentions some very important just by in his his uh, his ethna his his praise of allah azza wa jal he also uh clarifies some important points of the i'tiqad or the creed of ahlus sunnah in that ahlus sunnah uh makes makes tatbiq or uh, affirms the meanings uh, uh, of the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they're unique to, to him and that we don't uh, distort those meanings we don't make ta'wil of those meanings we don't negate those meanings uh, and at the same time that those meanings that they uh, do not resemble that those attributes do not resemble that of the creation and this fits in accordance with an important principle of ahlus sunnah which is from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al-kareem laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa sami'u basir that there is nothing that resembles him nothing that resembles him so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is negating that anything resembles him and that he resembles his creation. There's a negation there. This is the itaqad of Ahl Sunnah. We believe that. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not resemble his attributes are not like our attributes. Our attributes are not like his subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the all hearing and all seeing. So at the same time, we affirm that he hears and he sees and his hearing and seeing is still not like his creations his is perfect and we have nothing but shortcomings we are limited but we know and understand the meaning of hearing and sight and we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these attributes however these attributes are do not necessitate that they are although he hears and although he sees it doesn't necessitate that his hearing and sight are like ours so that is very concise about the itiqad of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, unlike the other sects and the sects that have to distort and negate those divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some of those divine characteristics that Allah subhanahu uh, that the Imam mentioned and in his praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Alhamdulillah. He said, all the praise belongs to Allah, the one most deserving of being remembered and mentioning. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the one the most deserving of being mentioned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَذْكُرْنِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that we remember him subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, he says, so 
remember me and I will remember you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers his servant. If his servant is mukhlas, they're sincere, and they are mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention him or her in a greater gathering, meaning the gathering of the malaika. So, this shows us the importance of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he is the most deserving of praise and being remembered, tabarak wa ta'ala. And then the imam, he said, wa ola men shukir. And he is the first one who should be thanked. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al-kareem, wa ishkuru li wa la Takfurun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and, re, and thank me and do not disbelieve. Because this disbelieving and not mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from arrogance. When you don't mention Allah, you fail to make uh, dhikr, and you fail to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attribute all the all of your blessings to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then and by failing to do good deeds then this is a failure to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a type of kufr kufr ni'm kufr ni'ma this is a way of showing a disregard and a lack of thankfulness for the ni'am, for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Imam, he also mentioned Al Wahid as Samad. And those are from the divine uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his, his, uh, his divine names Al Wahid, Wal Ahad, Wal Samad. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Kul hu Allahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of all praise and was worthy of all thanks. All thanks and praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Imam also mentioned in his Introduction, he said, Laysa lahu sahiba wala walid jalla an mithal, an mithil. So he also mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no partners. He has no, no partner, no wife, no daughter, and he has uh, no, no son. Negating this. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates for himself. All of this, these masail or these issues, have to do with the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that nothing resembles him. And this goes back to the ayat that we mentioned and as Imam Ahmed al-Najmi rahmatullahi rahmatul wasiya he mentions in his uh, explanation of it he mentions the ayat as evidence to show that there's nothing that resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no, no partners and that those divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they're indeed divine, that his creation, their attributes are unlike Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does have divine attributes. He does hear, he does see, he does have ilm. He's the all seeing, he's the all hearing, and he is the all knowledgeable to wa ta'ala, and he's the most, he's our Rahman, he's the most merciful. And so he uses as, he makes istidlal, from the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ كَمِتْلِي شَيْءٍ as we mentioned and as we already explained. And also where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا تَخَذَ صَاحِبَةٍ وَلَا وَلَدَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not taken a, a partner, he has no partner, nor does he have a child, nor does he have a, a, a son. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Samir and he is Al Basir and Al Alim as we, we mentioned that he he hears and he hears all sound. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguishes and his attributes are distinguished from his creation. We we don't we're limited. We can hear, I can hear what's in this room and perhaps outside of this room. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears everything. So there's no comparison between al khaliq wal makhluk the creator and the created. And likewise, likewise with uh, his, his sight, uh, al-basir, and his ilm, ahata ilmuhu bi jami' al-ma'lumat, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge encompasses all everything all of his creation it encompasses everything that which is that which will be in the future and that which was and that what that which could have been all of this is a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine knowledge this is something humanity and all of his creation they will never have they have never had and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-alim tabarakwa ta'ala and he mentioned some of the other attributes, but for the sake of time, we'll move into the next uh, part of the treaties where Imam Amazani he says, Alan ala arshihi fi majdihi bidatihi. Imam Amazani he mentions, he said, in the next portion of his trees which is talking about the alu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is above his creation that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne tabarak wa ta'ala as he says Allah is exalted above his throne in his grandeur in his essence meaning be that he and he is close to his creation with his knowledge his knowledge encompasses the affairs and whatever he has previously decreed for his creation is fulfilled. And he is al Jawad al Ghafur. He is the bestower of goodness and al Ghafur, the one who uh, forgives. So again, the Imam here is mentioning the, by exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's mentioning that which is from the itiqad of Ahl sunnah and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. And he mentions here, he said, Allah is exalted above his throne in his grandeur. Fi majdihi, in his grandeur. And what we say, Ahlul Sunnah, we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty, in, in his grandeur. We can't describe how. We don't ask the cave, how is this? Because when you begin to question, this is how Ahlul Bid'ah began to test, be a test for Ahlul Sunnah and began to distort the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either by negating those divine attributes and saying, no, he, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, rise, you know, or, and negating his names even. This is the Ittaqad of the Jahmiya or and other mu'attala, other groups that negated the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also then the Asha'ira and others who came along and said, no, we, we say uh, the, these names are correct, but they require that we make ta'wil, that we change the meaning, that we look for another meaning that is in accordance with our intellect. This is basically, in essence, why 
that usul of Ahl Sunnah versus the usul of the Ashairah and other groups, why they're different. Because for the Ashairah, they are fleeing from Tashbih, they are running from the creed of Tashbih, as Ahl Sunnah negates the Tashbih as well. But they are distorting the meaning. So that way it fits with their intellect. They're saying, hey, we can figure this all out. Ahl Sunnah says, no. We affirm as it was affirmed in the, in the text. And we negate as it was negated in the text. And we understand the meaning, but we don't understand the kafiyah. The kafiyah we're not asked to, to understand. And Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did not explain the kafiyah. And so we leave that. But we do understand that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala rose above His throne. Ar Rahman ala Arsh Istawa. So, Imam Muzni here, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasiyah, mentions and says, Alan ala arshihi fi majdihi bi thatihi. Imam Ahmed al Najmi Rahmatul Wasiya in his explanation he says, Inna al Alu Allah Azzawajal Alehi Adilla Kathira. He said there's so much evidence to support that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne. Adilla Kathira. There's so much evidence for this. He says, Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al kareem Amentum men fi samai and yachsifukum become and yachsifa become no art, the either here to more. Am amentum men fi samai and your sila alekum hasiba, the satalamuna, kefa nadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikitabi al Kareem, do you feel secure that he who is over the heaven? Without cause, uh, will not cause the earth to sink with you, and then it should quake. You know, then it should should quake, meaning the earth uh, will be we shaken. So here, the imam is, is showing this is evidence for what? This is evidence for the alu and the ascendancy of Allah Subhanahu. Wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Aamintum men fi samai. Do you feel secure that he who is over the heaven? So this shows what? This shows alu. This is evidence for the alu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Alayhi yas'alu kalim al-tayyib, kalim al-tayyib, wa amal al-salih yarfa'ahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, To him ascend the good works and the kalim al-tayyib. Kalim al-tayyib meaning the shahada, meaning the kalim al-tawheed. And righteous deeds, so righteous deeds, and the kalimat uh, kalimat that this ascends to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That means it. This is the evidence for the raising up, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is what is above His creation, Tabarak wa Taala. And there is so much evidence, also from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the Hadith. Lijaria Mu'awiyah bin Hakam where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her to said to the, the slave girl of uh, Mu'awiyah bin Hakam he said to her Aina Allah where is Allah Qalat fi sama she said in the heavens or above the heavens Qal Men ana, who am I? 
قالت أنت رسول الله You are the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اعتقها فإنها مؤمنة So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم responded by saying Free her for verily she's a believing woman She's a mu'mina. And this here is evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation. Because the slave girl affirmed that and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not deny that. He did not bring any other additional tafsil. He did not negate that. He did not distort that and say, oh, you should say like this or... No, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed that. And, and she was rewarded in the dunya wal akhirah for that. She was rewarded in this life by being free and being recognized as a mu'minah and in the hereafter as a mu'minah. So Ahlul Sunnah, as uh, Imam uh, Ahmed al-Najmi alayhi he says, وَأَخْلَ السُّنَّةِ يَعْتَقِدُونَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ مُسْتَوْوٍ عَلَىٰ عَرْشِهِ عَالٍ عَلَىٰ خَلْكِهِ بَائِنْ مِنْهُمْ بِذَاتِهِ وَهُوَ مَعْهُمْ بِعِلْمِهِ وَحَيْمَنَتِهِ وَقَهْرِهِ وَغَلَبَتِهِ So he says that Ahlul Sunnah, and this is the shahid, that Ahlul Sunnah, they believe, this is their aqidah, this is their itiqad, that Allah is above his arsh, above his throne. And he is above his creation and separate from them. Be that he in his essence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation. And he is with them at the same time, Tabarak wa ta'ala, with his knowledge. His knowledge is enc encompasses everything. And he has full power over them, and they are a part of his dominion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full authority and power and quwa and qahar over his creation, tabarak wa ta'ala. And those are just some of the evidences, and there are so many from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to illustrate this point of alu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation. And we'll continue in the next lesson, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad.